Well, good morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. And it is a beautiful day here in Hollywood, California. Well, good morning, gang. It's gonna be a weird week. I don't know what's gonna happen. I know I have to uh, work a couple days this week. And today, my friend Breck's supposed to come hang out, but I'm also supposed to get my car towed to a guy who owns a mechanic shop at his house, and he's gonna run some tests and figure out what's going on. I just don't know exactly what time that's gonna be, so it's kinda throwing everything into like a little bit of turmoil because I don't, I kinda have to work around their schedule, and uh, I don't know when I'm gonna do the vlogging. I don't even know what I'm gonna vlog. I have some vague ideas, but you know how it is. Sometimes they just kind of unfold, and hopefully some days those are the best vlogs we end up doing. So, days with Jordan the Lion, and this guy and my microphone hat begin now. It's a pretty cool looking sky today, isn't it? Since my car doesn't work and I'm not sure when it's going to work and Breck's coming here, I think I might try and talk him into doing two vlogs with me. At least two of the field trip parts of the vlogs and I'll release it later since I, like I said, I have to work and really won't know when I can get outside of my general vicinity. So maybe I'll be able to do that today. Well, Jeffrey, it looks like we're gonna go take the car via tow truck down to a mechanic and have it all tested and find out once and for all if uh, once it's ran through the machines, if we really have a bad engine or what exactly is going on. How do you feel about that? Can you hold down the fort while I go take our whip over to get looked at by the mechanic? Thank you, buddy. Well, I've been waiting for the tow truck driver. He said it'd be 15 minutes. We're now going on 45, so. All right, there he is. I think that's him. Well, now we got here and the mechanic's not here. All right, well, I've successfully dropped off the car and now I have to order a Lyft or an Uber. I'm gonna go home, Breck's on his way over, and then we're gonna do some vlogging. I think what I decided I wanna do today is uh, do a little piece on one of the Hollywood homes of minister turned comedian Sam Kinison. And this is actually a pretty interesting place because this is a house that's actually in a row of houses here in Los Angeles they call the Scandinavian Boat Houses. Should be fun. Well, you don't see many of these with an actual phone attached to them anymore. Well, Brex here, we're taking Joff for a walk, then we're gonna head out. Come on, friendo. We're going over the Invasion of the Body Snatchers Bridge to go do our location today. They're here, you fools! Well, here we are. This group of houses right here is actually called the Gessner Boat Houses, or sometimes known as the Scandinavian Boat Houses because this architect hired a bunch of Scandinavian shipbuilders to help build these houses. And opposed to using saws, they actually used hand axes. Now what's actually pretty interesting or why I actually came up here is because one of these houses I found was owned by Sam Kinison and Sam had actually lived here for the better part of his career. Um, if you don't know anything about Sam, he got started as a minister right out of high school. He was 18 years old and decided to become an evangelical preacher like his brothers, his whole family actually was. He said he really didn't ever feel like he he was very good at raising the money that you had to do to do that job. He said, I, I would deliver the good word and put out the offering plate and nobody really got into it. Nobody would <laughs> donate. So he said, I realized it wasn't very good, but he said, plus I became kind of disillusioned with the whole thing. Um, he said, once I got divorced, I realized I just, yeah, I didn't feel it anymore. And I decided I wanted to be a stand up comic. And he said, nobody really saw why I thought I could do that. But he said, I told him, you know, if I can make people in church laugh, I think you can make anybody laugh. And he had a house up here because once he got into stand-up comedy in the 70s, 
he would kind of cut his teeth in the Texas scene with people like Bill Hicks and Carl LeBeau, but he would also eventually make his way out to visit Los Angeles. And once he came to the comedy store, they said it was like almost like a religious experience. He saw Robin Williams and Richard Pryor the same night and said like, this is it, this is what I'm gonna do. He went back to Texas and started really focusing and then eventually came out here, moved to Los Angeles in the early 80s and um, got a job at the comedy store. Actually as a door guy, if a lot of you don't know, that's how a lot of comedians have actually started that have broken out of the comedy stores. They accepted a job as a um, door guy or they accepted a job as a um, cashier or working servers or whatever. And so Sam and Carl LeBeau both got jobs there. Mitzi Shore let her, or let them both live in one of her houses above the comedy store. Then once he started making money, back in those days, it might sound kind of far-fetched, especially if you know kind of the comedy scene now and what they get paid now. They said Sam could actually make like a really great living performing just at the comedy store. And he would eventually go on once um, he would perform in front of Rodney Dangerfield. Rodney Dangerfield was the one that was supposedly quoted as saying like, start your act with a screaming. Rope people in, don't let them get away from it. Make them know that's what you're gonna do. And so Sam was known for like being really in your face, but really real, really raw. And he was a heavy partier well known for cocaine, well known for drinking, and it just became what he was synonymous for. In fact, they said people would be worried about um, working with him, and this was actually his house right here. They said that they would be worried about working with him because they didn't know what he was gonna do, and he said in an interview, he's like, I don't know why they think that. I've always worked professionally under the parameters. He said, when I've been on Carson or Letterman or Married with Children or any of the shows I've been on, I've never been a problem. And they asked him about Andrew Dice Clay when he was banned from MTV and Sam just flat out said, I hate the guy, he's a thief. He's a piece of garbage and I hope his career ends as quick as it, it possibly can. He's a hack, he's just a guy ripping off Fonzie's jacket, Stallone's personality and He's a no talent. He's like, look at his new album and look at my first album. He's ripped off a handful of stuff from me. So Sam was supposedly lived in this house from 1983 until he died. And um, I was trying to get in contact with his brother. I, the email got returned. I tried to get in contact with somebody I know that knew Sam and she didn't respond to the email and I actually, actually tried to get in touch with Carla Bov, who was Sam's best friend for pretty much his entire career in comedy and his opening act. And I didn't get a response from him, but he will come into play at the end of this story because um, Sam's career in the late 80s kind of started to fall apart and they said people actually heckle him, throw stuff at him and well-respected comics that are alive today even said when they saw him they're like he was a shell of himself. He was like watching a guy rip off Sam Kinison but not very good at it, you know? And so Sam cleaned up, quit doing all the drugs and started winning people back over and started making music. He would record some albums, um, do some music videos, and um, the reason I think that he actually did live up here, even though I was kind of skeptical as to what the dates would be, is because I knew he lived at a Crest Hill house that, like I said, Mitzi Shore owned, but um, I read where he had been involved in a car accident on Nichols Canyon, and it would make sense if you were leaving the comedy store that you would take Nichols Canyon to get to this Scandinavian boat house, this Gessner house that he lived in and owned. So Sam's career was actually on the upswing, and this guy who was once a preacher was now literally making like 25 to 50 grand per performance, and um, was paying his opening acts 100 grand a year. And Sam was trying to live a sober lifestyle, and then um, had got married, and six days later after returning from Hawaii, um, was going to fulfill an obligation in Vegas and right in the middle of the afternoon was hit head-on by a 17-year-old drunk driver in a uh, truck 
and Sam wasn't wearing a seatbelt, so Sam was thrown to the front of the windshield and uh, received brain trauma and basically died of it, but they said that his brother who was there and Carl Above also said that when they pulled Sam out and laid him out, he was talking to someone and first thing he said was, I don't want to die. And then the voice talked for a second or whatever and then Sam responded and said, but I'm not ready to go yet, why do I have to go? And then he just finally said, okay, 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 and died. Now, at the end of Sam's life, Carl LeBeau, his best friend, had a girlfriend that, sh that Sam and Carl would share occasionally during their big drug binges, and apparently it was no big deal. And when Carl and the woman decided to get serious, they ended up getting pregnant, and when Sam was in his last days, the baby was born and people would say, Carl, are you sure that's not Sam's baby? I mean, this, the baby looks just like Sam and has blonde hair. And Carl said, well, my mom and my sister have blonde hair, so I didn't think much about it. And Sam would actually come up to Carl and say, hey man, don't listen to him. That's it's all just rumor, I wouldn't do that to you. And you know, we stopped that a while ago. And then a couple of years after Sam passed away, the relationship ended between Carl and the woman and the woman who was his wife actually said, I have to tell you the truth, that's Sam's baby. And we didn't know how to tell you and Sam was scared to death of losing your friendship and that's why we've lied. But because of Sam's passing, Carl had always opened for Sam and like I said, he was making at one point 100 grand a year. But once Sam passed, Carl wasn't even making 6,000 a year. And the courts upheld um, Carl to have to pay child support on that hundred grand when he was only making six and because he fell behind and then found out it wasn't his child. They ended up suspending his license for years. Um, as a stand-up comic who still performs, he has to have people drive him around or take him to do things. And um, for, I would say, seven years he was trying to fight that case and has actually um, got that case, I believe, went through and now the baby is official. well, the now the girl, I believe, is in her 20s, is officially known as Sam Kennison's daughter. It's said that Sam bought this house after he was on the successful Dangerfield uh, Comedy Hour specials and also had made back to school and was just in the height of his career. So to think how many jokes would have been written here, the great Sam Kinison, or how many amazing parties would have been had here. In fact, the, um, the owner of the Laugh Factory said in an interview that he refused to allow drugs in his comedy club. So he said when Sam would do a set, Sam would actually run off the stage, out the door and into the alleyway during his set and do like two rails of Coke, like an elephant. He just said he would go like, and then run back in and do another set. And uh, eventually found sobriety and ironically was killed by someone who was not sober and a drunk driver. Now here's a side view of one of the boat houses. We're gonna drive around the corner and see if we can't get another angle. And I didn't wanna to go too much in depth into the death of Sam because I wanna to go to the crime or the death scene at some point and actually vlog that itself. Now here's the close-up of one of the boat houses, but if you look across, you can actually see what they look like across because there's a handful of them in this neighborhood. Now in that auto accident, I was able to find it that happened on uh, Woodrow Wilson. That would make sense that, um, that they would be on their way up here, but what they said was that they tried to accuse Sam of leaving the scene, but he said, no, I had a bodyguard that was with me in the car. We hydroplaned off the road cruised up the side of like a rock wall and um, crashed in between two trees and we were just going for help but because I was a celebrity and the police showed up 10 minutes later and we weren't standing by the car they wanted to turn it into something so he said that was he really realized then that was the price of fame and celebrity wow check out this place I'm catching a lot of the light glare but we were driving by I'm gonna look up this address and see if there's a story here wow it's incredible the insides and everything, look at that. That's beautiful. This looks like a Ferris wheel right there. Let's take a look. Wow, this would this would really fit in in Budapest, that's for sure. And this is literally right near, right around the corner from the 
Sam Kinison boathouses. I can't wait to research this. This is, okay, this is what I love about vlogging and why I don't really, I'm not really appealed by the, when I get like an email from somebody telling me all the things they know about Hollywood and all the places they want to show me, because I'm like, that's not why I do it. I do it because I, I like to stumble upon the stories myself. I like to follow something that I read all the way back to finding out where it was and then realizing I've been by there before or something, you know? It's not about knowing everything about everything. It's the experience of the joy of figuring it out and, you know, the surprise of it all. What a, what a great place to park your car. Well, that is a very pleasant surprise driving by this place. Well, there's kind of a closer view of the boathouses. I'm trying to actually see the one behind that tree. All right, in a row of five, his was the dead center, the third one, no matter which side. And that right there would have been Sam Kinison's house. And there's another angle of it. When you see this street that the houses are on, I can definitely understand why he'd want to live over here. This is a pretty cool, a lot of the houses on this street are very interesting. Not to mention, I guess, one of the most famous architects in the history of the world creating a boathouse that was handmade with hand axes. Fascinating. You never know what you'll find in LA history. All right, well I just got the call and we got the official tested car diagnosis is that yes, it's definitely the engine. So it's gonna cost me 1800, I think we lost jaw. It's gonna cost me $1,800 to get it all uh, replaced with a new engine um, or a used engine that's less than 50,000 miles. Um, all the parts and labor and everything and that is with a three month warranty on the engine as well as the work so, um, and they should be able to get it done in three or four days. So now I gotta go not only to get some apple cider but to hit the bank and get half that money so they can start um, by buying the engine and start doing the work. So hopefully I can get the car because um, Friday is the music video awards. The uh, song that I did for John Juan is up for an award and I want to go. So hopefully they can get it fixed by then. The beautification of Hollywood starts here. Ja, we just had success. We got exactly what we need out. Now we're gonna get the cider and get out of here. Thanks for watching, Breck. All right, well I stopped in and bought some of the uh, apple cider because it's the closest thing to the stuff that I grew up with off the side of the road in Ohio. And uh, got these new weird like french fry potato chip type deals. Not a paid advertisement, but I love these things. I can't recommend them enough and I can't recommend that sucker enough. Well, I hate to say goodbye on a sad note, but of course we've probably all heard by now that Muddy Wilbury from the Traveling Wilburys, also known as Tom Petty, passed away, and he's another one I think just about everybody loves. And uh, I will have a Tom Petty vlog coming your way sometime in the near future. So, I'm going to call it a night, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed seeing the Scandinavian boathouses that Sam Kinison lived in, and... Uh, Rest in peace, Tom Petty, Muddy Wilbury. Goodbye.